Disney has faced a ton of trouble over the past few years, and even just over the past 12 months alone, they've lost a billion dollars at the box office, but apparently they've got an incredible amount of faith in their leadership since Bob Iger's contract has now been extended through 2026. I have a few different things to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted, and of course if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon or a supporter via YouTube member memberships. So starting off with this CNN article, it says Disney extends Bob Iger's contract through 2026, and this is hilarious because they have already gotten rid of him once, and then they put Bob Chappick in his place, but then they decided, no, no, we need the other Bob back, and now they are just really holding on to him. It says the Walt Disney Company's board has unanimously voted to extend Iger's contract through the end of 2026, an extension of two years. When he stepped into the CEO role at Disney for a second time in 2022, he stressed that the job would only last two years as the company searched for a suitable replacement. This is why it's so funny, is because clearly they can't find anyone else who can get them out of the mess that they're in and they're probably figuring that Bob Iger has been with the company for so long, he's led so many charges for them, that, uh, you know, he's going to find a way out of this sticky situation that they find themselves in. And, uh, you know, he did stress, you know, last year that, oh, it was only going to be for two more years, that was going to be it, but it doesn't seem like they can find anybody else. It says in a statement Wednesday about his extension, he said that he had to make difficult decisions to address some existing structural, structural and efficiency issues, but he believed Disney's long-term future is incredibly bright. I mean, obviously, Disney makes a massive amount of money every single year, they have, you know, been at the top of the food chain in the entertainment industry, but it does seem like things are changing around a bit for them. As I've recently had to talk about in a few videos, a financial analyst speculated that the Walt Disney Company had lost nearly $900 million at the box office in the past year, and that didn't include Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which is going to lose upwards of $200 million for them at this point. So, that number is well over a billion right now, which is obviously a massive amount of money to lose. Again, they do make a lot of money, but at the same time, losing a billion at the box office is not good. Then, on top of that, you've actually got their, you know, streaming losses. This is from uh, November 2022, but I still felt it was relevant to show off. Disney Plus keeps growing fast, but streaming loses $1.5 billion, and Disney Plus is not growing fast at this point. But they had reported an operating loss of nearly $1.5 billion, more than doubling its loss of $630 million during the same quarter a year earlier. Of course, you would think that this really wouldn't be the case since they do have blockbuster franchises like Star Wars and Marvel, um, but unfortunately for them, it just hasn't been enough to bring in lots of new subscribers because it definitely seems like they've hit that ceiling, but also keep people interested in their service because, yes, every movie that they release, every Star Wars, every MCU film does eventually make its way onto Disney+. Plus. It can still take, take weeks for that to happen, and people do get kind of sick and tired of waiting, and then their interest wanes. So after, you know, two months to two and a half months of it being in theaters, they're like, eh, 
I'm moving on to the next big film, and it just seems like everything is really piling up for them. But like I mentioned, Bob Chappick was the last Bob at the company who Bob Iger replaced, and it really seemed like, you know, they were not going to keep Iger around for a very long time. But here are eight reasons why Bob Chappick was fired at Disney, and a lot of them are very obvious, like he was allegedly cooking the books, he was, um... You know, according to the Wall Street Journal, making the decision to air pilot episodes of both the Mysterious Benedict Society and Doogie Kamola um, on Disney on the Disney Channel before streaming them to Disney Plus, so that he could write them off as marketing and production costs of the series as Disney Channel shows, as opposed to Disney Plus shows, which have a different budget, which was very suspicious. Obviously, Disney Plus at the time was losing tons of money, and they still are. But it says. Disney Disney Plus has lost billions of dollars since it launched in November 2020. Despite the growing number of subscriptions, the streaming service has yet to turn a profit two years into its existence, and according to the LA Times, direct-to-consumer business lost Disney $4 billion during the full fiscal year. Disney stock has tanked. Disney stock has been having big problems. Theme park employees were grumpy and one of, uh, you know, Bob Iger's, I mean, excuse me, Bob Chappick's major losses was Galactic Star Cruiser. Even though Bob Iger was the one to initially plan it and greenlight it, Galactic Star Cruiser did launch under Bob Chappick, and it lost them over a billion dollars. I mean, it wasn't even running for a full year, and then they decided that they were going to cut it, they were going to shut it down, because of how poorly it was doing. So we have seen them go through some major issues over the past few years, and I can't really say that I'm all that surprised that, you know, this is happening. Uh, we have seen a drastic dip in quality of the products that they are putting out. They are hiring like the worst writers, directors, and producers to work on their you know, movies and TV shows. And it is sad because there was a time where I absolutely loved the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I would be so excited to see every piece of content, whether it was a show or a movie. It didn't matter. I would have loved it, but Unfortunately, that's gone down the drain. And then we also have Star Wars, which they have bastardized. It is so sad to see what has happened to such, again, an amazing franchise. And then you have all of these live-action remakes that are killing people's nostalgia for the golden days of Disney, the Disney Renaissance, as people call it. And Iger has tried to get people back, right? I mean, he has said several times over the past few years that Disney would will always prioritize content quality over volume, but the lie detector has clearly determined that that was a lie because that isn't not what they have been doing, right? They have not proven that to us as consumers at all whatsoever. But yes, I mean, this is a big list of reasons why Disney is failing, why Disney has had some problems, and it does all come back to Bob Iger because there were many things that Bob Iger set up years ago when he was with Disney that Chappick was not able to manage. They had to bring Iger back, and it really looks like they don't know who else to put in his position at this current time. So they have extended his contract through 2026. Maybe they've got this magical roadmap that's going to change the company and change content and fix everything, but I personally highly doubt it. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this and, of course, found it important and informative, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And, of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.